Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mazel Class. I'm your host, Rabbi David Kitz. Type one for being alive. It's good to be alive. It is a gitazach to be alive. Type one, if it's a gita greiser zoch, kleine menschen, zoch in kleine menschen, to be alive. Michtav milio sham. Yesh be a the mazilis in yin tam yevinela meoi. The Darga Negres Adi Yoimino by his spheres. Kesser Chokma Bina Chesig Lord Verde of Holy Soy Machus. Schleishes Rishinis Kedro Das, Chokma Bina Vergis Hashemis Verg Abi Sharash, a real Negres Mazalil. Type one if you understood that. Shevis Spheres Hacheris and Haga Hila Vis Husva Hova. He nikres mazel tachtam if he zem efarish es hashela in yesh mazel Yisrael away mazel be ahev do be mazel eli in mazel tachtoyin michtav miliyahu sham the safer yesh bi'olam adzilis there is in the world of adzilis. Inyan Tamir Vanilla Mioi, a very concealed and hidden matter, Jacques. Vehi Durga Hanikris Atikyoimin, Ubiasus Firus. Type one, if you've ever heard of Atsilis. If you haven't, type one, if you understand what I say, when I say a very high, entirely godly world or an entirely godly existence or an entirely godly rendition of our world, type one. Type one, come on. John, Justin, come on, come on, come on, come on. One, 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 one. Come on, come on down. Hello, 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 hello. One, one, hello. Shock, it's just me and you. There we go. There we go. All right. So now, Atik Yoimin is what that's called. Atik Yoimin. In Kabbalah, that's the highest level of Kesser, the crown. The right son, the will of God. It's the will of wills. It's what God himself influences into. And it contains ten levels of emanation. Ten sphero, ten godly powers. and Malchus. And Shalashi Sari Shainis, the top three, which are Ket there, the crown, wisdom and understanding, or if you want, if you prefer an alternative approach, it's Das, Chachma, and Bina. Knowledge, awareness, wisdom, and understanding. We call that the Mohim. The Mohin, Shalom Adelino. Call that the Mohin. And God operates with the top three spheres, the Mohin. Meaning that God has direct governing over the world through Mohin. And that's called Mazel Elyon. Why? Because it just it just happens. Because God affects it. Right? Can you all think of a really cool guy? Everyone type one when you've thought of a really cool guy. Type one. Like Fonzie from, from the, whatever the name of that show was. What was the name of that show? With Fonzie. What's the name of that show? Everyone remember Fonzie? What was the name of the show with Fonzie? Jacques? John? Justin? 
Happy days. <laughs> so when Fonzie walks in the room, he doesn't tell you, hey, everybody, it's Fonzie. You just know because he affected the room, type one. That's on the Mohim. So when God emanates into Atik, and in Atik, the Mohim are directly affected by God, because God created that way, higher and lower, and they are higher and closer to God. If you want to use borrowed Lafib Shuto terminology language to explain spatial parameters to God, which is not possible, but for the sake of Kabbalistic discourse, we do that. That's why Jacques is called Lafib Shuto. Sheve HaSviris HaCheres Han Hagahi Lafis Chus so there are seven lower spherot. We call them Chesed, Gevura, Tiferet, Netzach, and Hod, and Yesod, and Malhut for our friends in Texas. Now we have seven spheres, correct? And God affects them through Schus in Chovah. Merit and penalty. So a way of describing this is God, Lahavdil, personally affects the Mohim. Meaning when you get a thought that was more godly when I, uh, when I politely asked you to be quiet or leave. Remember when I asked all you guys to be quiet or leave? Do you remember that? Remember that? Type one. Remember? Hello? Yes. So what happened was I told you, Jacques, be quiet or leave. I afflicted your soul with a penalty. Type one. So that was God affecting you, Jacques with whatever reason God wanted to affect you. If God wants you to fight back, maybe that's Netzach, victory. If God wants you to somehow blush, maybe that's beauty. If God wants you to donate a million dollars because I asked you to leave, that's kindness, right? Or if I said, hey, everybody, today is Jacques Day. We're all going to have tremendous respect for Jacques. So God is saying to Jacques, hey, Jacques, it's God here. And through Rabbi Katz, he's a nice shliach. He doesn't know that I'm telling you this. But we like you a lot. And we're going to give you a lot of grace and merit, Jacques type one. So Rabbi Katz, I've commanded him through his mohin, he doesn't know why, to give you a bit of merit. And I'm doing this for you, Jacques, says God, because Jacques, you are a mighty man and you have been victorious. Netzach. Because, Jacques, you're a beautiful guy uh, to Ferris, beauty. Because, Jacques, you're a pillar of the community, you're Yisod. So, Jacques, you would get motivated directly by God, but through the medium of the seven lower spheres of merit or penalty, type one, type one. So all of you people complain when God rubs you the wrong way, right? Type one. What that means is God is either penalizing you or, or giving you points. And I like good points, right? And the reason why you're bothered by God is because you don't know the motivation. See, when I said, hey, everybody, it's Jacques Day. Jacques is paranoid because he doesn't know why would Rabbi Katz tell everybody it's Jacques Day, Jacques Type 1. Then he would talk about it with his family, and he would say, I don't know, I was kind of embarrassed by Rabbi Katz. He, I hope the people in class don't think it's actually a holiday for me. And they would say, no, Jacques, Rabbi Katz was probably just joking. Oh, you know Rabbi Katz. And Jacques would say, no, but I really think he meant it. He really believes in Jacques Day. 
the bottom line, Jacques, is it's none of your business why I said it, right? Type one. God simply is getting you the message. You need to know, Jacques, if you felt it and you liked it, then it was schus, merit. If you felt it and you didn't like it, it was a penalty. And Jacques, just because you don't know why I'm complimenting you, you do know it's a compliment. And if you don't know why I'm, I'm tormenting you, you don't know why, but you do know torment from a compliment, type one. So you're arguing with the wrong guy. You know when I don't like you, and you know when I like you. And you really need to stop wondering why I like you or don't like you. You need to ask yourself, why does God want to tell you through me, but forget about me? Just why is God telling you like Jacques or dislike Jacques, type one Jacques? And you'll only know that answer when you understand my actions away from myself, which means drop the ego and understand what was Rabbi Katz conveying. Not because I want to. I'm just a servant of God here, whether I like it or not. Type one. So if I say, hey, it's Jacques Day, everybody, and I just really find Jacques to be a beautiful guy. It doesn't matter if I'm a, a, a lunatic Jacques. It doesn't matter. If you can see that despite the fact that I'm loony, is God simply saying, poke Jacques with merit of beauty, right? Type one. If that's what's coming through, then you got to say, all right, amen. All right, he needed to use his rabbi cats. It was a little bit weird, but what can you do? Now, when God pokes me to poke Jacques, and it comes from my mentality, then God spoke to my Mohin, type one. God put it in my mind, the thought, hey, tell Jacques he's a beautiful guy. And see, Jacques doesn't know what I'm thinking, because I don't even know what I'm thinking, because God made me think it, type one. God gives me the thought, hey, Rabbi Katz, remember in Cape Town when you and Jacques were sipping from coconuts with straws in them, much like a Gilligan's Island episode. Remember how great that was? Yes, God, I do remember. That was a fantastic moment. Yes, why don't you remind Jacques, but God, it's class time. Should I really remind Jacques of his inner beauty and grace? Yes, Rabbi Katz, for some unknown reason. And I will sufficiently distract you, and I will conceal myself from you, that you will forget all about this conversation. Just go ahead and remind Jacques. And I come out, hey, everybody, Jacques, you're a beautiful guy. See, you don't know that I was reminiscing about Cape Town, and you never thought to ask, type one. So what it was was God affected my mochen, and I came out and poked you with a schus of teferis, and Jacques, that's all it was. You really don't need to know my thought process, do you? It doesn't matter. Your job is to figure out where it's coming from and how it's getting to you. Does everyone understand this analogy? Type one. So it shows how I got affected with Mochen, and God used my Mochen to affect Jacques. Jacques' Mochen was not bothered. I didn't cause a thought with Jacques. It came from outside of him. Jacques wasn't sitting there saying, God, it's Jacques again here. Am I beautiful, God? I mean, really. I mean, it's me, Jacques. Um, God, am I really beautiful? No. So Jacques's not having that conversation with his Mochen, is he? No. So therefore, Jacques does not have ego, and he doesn't have those kind of thoughts. So he puts a weird random thought in me to give over to Jacques. And because Jacques is unfamiliar with an egotistical thought, he then has to figure out where it comes from. Do you understand this? Imagine that that kind of divine providence happens to you every single day at every moment of the day. Type one. Why did the grocery store kids say this to me? Why did my wife look at me that way? Why did the kid next door throw a paintball tablet, whatever, at my house? Why this? Why that? Every single thing is either God affecting your thoughts to affect others and yourself or other people's thoughts and actions affecting you. All so that you can understand where it's coming from from God, ultimately through Mazel, connecting to the Mazel alien, type 1. When you connect to the upper mazel, 
You're connecting to the divine will of creation, which means you're getting into the holiness of the world, an entirely godly construct. All right? And I didn't understand that, so I got to read it again. How many of you know that there's a famous question? Does Israel believe in Mazel or does Israel not believe in Mazel? Type one. Now, we know that's the question. But, one second. I just, I just glanced up above. This idea of schus and chova, hold on, it appears above. Hold on a second. That caught my eye. Right, so, okay, I got it now. That, that was divine providence right there. Mazel changes by schus and chova. I don't think we caught that last week. Schus is uh, by davening, you can have a, a great merit to change your, your mazel, type one. What does it mean, chova? I didn't get that last time. Hold on a second. Back up. Okay, hold on. What does that mean? The mazel changes by chova. Hold on a second, peoples. I never noticed that that Iker term. Jock, Iker term. Everybody on pause. We got an Iker term here. See, that's what happens. When you find an Iker term, you got to stop and find it out. Type one. Type one. See, I was just re- this is a classic example. Type one for being with me here. I was just going to read this Chusin Chova, and I know what it means here in our context, right? God is either giving you zets or He's giving you a pat on the back. Type one. But I glanced up. God literally put a thought in my eye, in my head, and He said, "Hey, Davo." Look up top on the top of the page. And it says there, Schus v'chova v'ayinyan nitin l'asoga. So we're saying that Sharav Yosi medaber b'misha, he says that the b'misha kelim him rock, the vessels are only to serve your purpose, and therefore they change, they can be changed by schus by great merit in Chova. And the Indian is given for Hasaga. The matter will be understood. What does it mean, Schus and Chova? I know what Schus means. What does Chova mean? What does that mean? I never saw this. See how it's an Iker term? Yeah, for the left. You see how it's an Iker term? We, in our, in our source on the bottom, we have it saying, Schus and Chova, correct? In a completely different context. You understand that? So we have Schus and Chova, and it makes sense by us. And on the top, it makes no sense. Then we say, Rabbi Meir, Medabi Rabbi Misha, and Rabbi Meir was talking about a guy who's poor or rich, and they themselves, that those things themselves are for his purpose. And therefore, and they don't change by merit or chova. And if you ask, why is my portion as such? So hold on, I think I'm getting it now. All right, so one guy says they change your mazel changes, the other guy says your mazel doesn't change. So your mazel changes by schus and chova. 
So that, that, that's what we're saying here. We're saying that the whole idea of does Israel belong to Mazel, it's only talking about that which can change through schus and chalva. Because it's not a question of do you have Mazel, it's a question of can you change your Mazel. And therefore, you see the answer here, right? If you can change your mazel, it means your soul is rooted in lower mazel. That means Jacques would have to ask me to stop poking him, type one, everybody. And if you cannot change your mazel, that means you just have mazel from God in your thoughts. And it's not a matter of being poked by Rabbi Katz. It's Rabbi Katz gets weird thoughts in his head to poke shock, type one. Now, we know that from this point, but what does it mean, chova? Schus means uh, I worked on it really, really, really hard, right? I davened a lot, and God answered. That's schus. But what does it mean, chova? What a fantastic Iker question, Jacques. Does everybody understand why it's an ikker? Because we see it being used as a function in two different places, and it's not an accident that it appears in two different places of a similar topic but a different context, type one. And we're going to figure this out. We are going to figure it out. What is it? That is a fantastic question. What does it mean, chova, in regards to mazel changing? I never saw this before. Why? Because I wasn't ready for the ichor, was I? For me, it was just a word that I thought I knew, right? Just like we all arrogantly think we know words, correct? And then one day, Rabbi Katz saw it and said, Oi, I don't know what chova means. Now, I know what it means. But we don't know how it's being used in the Iker, the bigger framework here. Therefore, they change. Are you this chus v'chova? Lachin ina mishtanim are you this chus v'chova? Rabbi Meir medaber b'misha niyas v'shiras hey me'etzim tachlisoi. Lachin ina mishtanim are you this chus v'chova? Ah, yeah, I think God can penalize you by changing your mazel. You see that? Right, so you can change your mazel with schus, a great merit. Wait, hold on, here's another one. Hold on, no, that's that. Or with chova. Meaning, um, I don't know if you want to get punished. It's like din. It's not that you want to change your mazel. Your mazel just gets changed, right? You, um, I mean, I guess I'll bring a really bad analogy here, okay? Did, it would seem that Christopher Reeves' mazel changed. You understand what I'm saying? Wouldn't it seem that way? Christopher Reeves' mazel changed. He, you know, he became an, an advocate for something completely different because once he became paralyzed, acting was not a possibility. Type one. You could even say that Donald Trump's mazel changed from Chova. Right? He, he's going to have a different mazel, and not because he davened for it, being president in is one thing. When he became the, the the leader of the free world, he didn't daven for that. He didn't know. He didn't even know how to daven for that. All right. So I, I, right now, that's our word until we find a better ikker. Therefore, the question of can Israel change its mazel? Does Israel have mazel? 
Lefi Zem Afar says a Shela Ein Yesh Mazel Yisrael Ein Mazel. I back up, back up. Shemar Sfiras Ha'Achemers Hanhaga He Lefi Schus V'Cholva. Shemar Sfiras Ha'Achemers Hanhaga He Lefi Schus V'Cholva. Right, they bring about a, a merit. They bring about a penalty. This is called Mazel Tachtun. Lower Mazel. The Fize, according to that, the question of does Israel have Mazel or not, i.e., can you change your Mazel, i.e., can you get jock so much, so much schus that your Mazel changes? Could it be that I compliment jock so much that he actually gets a different Mazel, type 1? Or could it be that I abuse Jacques so much, he says, I don't ever want to be associated with that cat's guy again, and Jacques' mazel changes. Right? A total change of mazel. Uh, and that's the question. Can I get in so much trouble that God can actually change my mazel? Or can I get so much praise from God that it changes my mazel? You hear the question? Uh, what does that mean? Right, so the question is, is so there's a difference between the higher mazel and lower mazel. And I think there's a lot of ways that you can understand this, just like any piece of Torah. Do you say that the higher mazel doesn't change and lower mazel changes? Or do you say, Yish Mazel Yisrael, Ein Mazel, that uh, the, the, the Iker term, Jacques, that there is Mazel for Israel is higher Mazel, and there's not Mazel for Israel is lower Mazel? Which means, do we focus on the higher Mazel? Do we have access to the higher Mazel? Or do we have access only to the lower Mazel? And now it becomes divine ping pong, correct? Now it becomes Iker Lafib Shuto, like Jacques asked me all week long, Jacques Type 1, about Ger Toshav of today. Now there's no right answer. It's all about the coordinate, and you have the, the coordinates to work with in this piece. Does everyone understand that? There's a concept called merit. There's a penalty. There's thoughts. There's actions. There's higher mazel. There's lower mazel. Do, does Israel have mazel? Does Israel not have mazel? From those coordinates, then you, you, you factor in the whole mazel discussion, and you can get an answer. You're not meant to get an answer at this part. This is just how mazel works. And let's go ahead and finish it out. Ready? He's going to explain. That's just the introduction. Now we're going to explain the piece. Okay. The upper three mazel spheres, uh, the Mohin, has everything that your soul will ever want to do in 6,000 years, type 1. How God will orchestrate with you is called Mazel Elyon. Basically, everything comes from your thoughts, and God works with your thoughts, and your thoughts already thought it. But God's thoughts are not like your thoughts. The Gimel Spheris Elu Nikras Resha the lowest yacht. And these three spheres are called the unknowable head. You will never know, like I just said, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Down below, 
We don't know what God is thinking. So Jacques, when I compliment you, you will never, ever, 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 ever be able to figure it out because I don't even know myself, type one. And it's not my business why God's thinking your thoughts through me. I just accept it because that's what we do. It's above free will and it's above time. I didn't choose to compliment you, Jacques. God just made me do it. If I insulted you, God made me do it. Now, in my own little mind, I have my own reasons. But Jacques, you need to have not an ego here, and you need to realize that even though I'm egotistical and I have reasons, that's not God's reason. Type one. Valdarga zo namar o penelo yiru this is what God means when God says, "You, will, my face you will not see, and I will grace who I choose to grace, type one. The seven spheres, they are applicable to time they happen within time meaning Jacques if I thought to say uh, hey everybody blah 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 Jacques that thought was not now I was actually in a time warp when that thought came in my mind to you and it just looked like it came now type one but if Jacques if I uh, chose then to jab you and, I, and God put the thought in my head, hey, everybody, okay, it's taunt Jacques. And I went up and said, hey, Jacques, I'm going to taunt you in front of everybody. That was time. That was my choice. That was, that was divine providence in this world. And you need to figure out why am I bothering you? Is it because you merited merit or did you merit a punishment? And that's called mazel tachten. Wow, that's amazing. You see why it's called Mazel Tachten? Because God didn't poke you. I did. Everyone type one. I with, rose up and said, I'm going to poke you. Me. Me, me, me. So I am an emissary of God. Now, I can either do that from ego or from not ego. Right? But either way, you can't deny the fact that I got up and poked you. You can't call that God. I am not God. I am me. And God is engineering me, and God either did it to poke you for good or bad, but either way, I chose to carry out God's will. Nimsa, Sham, Hashem, Rizal, Yesh, Mazel, Yisrael. What does it mean there is Mazel for Israel? Hainu ma, hainu ma, l'shan, esal yudei, schus v'chovah. That he does not change your mazel, not through merit and not through chova. Medaber be mazel elian. That's mazel elian, Jacques. Right? So when God put a thought in your head, you don't need to think, oh man, I thought a bad thought. God changed my mazel. No, he didn't. If God put a great thought in your head, you don't say, wow, God made me Moshe Rabbeinu. No, he didn't. There's no mazel for Israel. That's mazel tachten. The low pligi, and they don't argue. So they're two separate ent entities. God running the show, which doesn't change, and God allowing us to run the show, which does, uh, wait, wait, which does change. Through schus and chova. 